Here are the top common misconceptions about strength and corrosion for steel and aluminum. Steel is stronger than aluminum. Well, sometimes. Here's a comparison of steel and aluminum yield strengths for various common alloys of both. Stainless steel is over here around 200 MPa along with steel studs, but high strength bolts, other than more brittle alloys with high nickel content, are over here towards 1000 MPa. Typical structural steel members and rebar are in the middle here at 350 to 400 MPa. How about aluminum? High strength aluminum alloys such as the 7000 series used in aircraft components are up here around 700 MPa. Pure aluminum is down here at 25 to 50 MPa for 1000 series alloys. Typical 6000 series extruded aluminum for building members is here between 170 and 240 MPa, but can be as low as 70 MPa when welded. As this plot shows, there's quite a lot of overlap in the strengths of steel and aluminum. Okay, but how about if we consider strength per weight? Aluminum must actually be better then, right? Well, not necessarily. We can divide by unit weight to normalize this plot by the relative weights of steel and aluminum and see how this changes the overlap. Still, many of the steel and aluminum alloys are overlapping. However, this does not mean that steel and aluminum are the same. And it doesn't negate the fact that aluminum has a unit weight approximately three times lighter than steel, and that aluminum also deflects significantly more than steel. Let's say you're looking for a support beam for a structure. In this first graph, considering only strength, a typical steel beam would be at 350 MPa, whereas a typical aluminum beam may be around 200 MPa. But if weight is a concern, maybe you look at the second graph normalized by weight instead. Here, you would find that you're getting more strength per weight from the aluminum beam. Some prevalent examples of aluminum's advantageous strength to weight ratio are transmission lines, trailers, and aircraft components. For cables spanning between transmission towers, cable self weight is the primary structural design load, so strength to weight is very important. And of course, it helps that aluminum is conductive, since the whole point is to transport electricity. For transportation vehicles, strength to weight is also a critical factor for consuming less energy and being more maneuverable. Cars and planes tend to use higher strength aluminum alloys for this reason. For planes, while aluminum is used for certain components, there are materials with better strength to weight than aluminum for hulls or fuselages such as carbon fiber, although older planes did use aluminum for this. Aluminum won't corrode, will it? Metal corrosion occurs when a surface layer of molecules reacts chemically to the ambient conditions. In this reaction, valence electrons move from the metal's surface layer to the surrounding environment. For aluminum, the chemical composition of its surface layer, when interfaced by air, is typically aluminum oxide. Aluminum oxide has no free valence electrons to give up, so it can continually form when aluminum is oxidized since there's always more aluminum in the material to feed the reaction. So aluminum is referred to as corrosion resistant. However, the surface layer of aluminum oxide is only a few nanometers thick. Highly humid environments, abrasive actions, or high salinity conditions can continually wear out the surface layer and cause corrosion of aluminum. To counter this, aluminum is often anodized to increase the thickness of this aluminum oxide surface layer from nanometers to microns. This is why aluminum is said to be corrosion resistant, but it is not corrosion proof. In contrast, steel definitely corrodes, right? Not always. There are some types of steel designed to perform as corrosion resistant, similar to aluminum. Among these are stainless steel and weathering steel. For stainless steel, the iron is alloyed with chromium, which, similar to aluminum, continually forms a thin protective layer of chromium oxide on the surface. Recalling our strength chart, we can see that this added corrosion resistance does come at a significant strength cost. Typical structural steel has a yield strength of 350 MPa, whereas typical stainless steel yields around 200 MPa. Weathering steel, on the other hand, 
manages to avoid this strength reduction while still providing corrosion resistance. This type of steel, often seen for bridge girders or outdoor art displays, is alloyed so that it maintains strength similar to typical structural steel, also so that it forms a special type of stable rust designed to live on the surface with low porosity to protect the structural steel underneath. This plot shows how typical rust forms, falls off, and allows another layer to grow, iteratively. In contrast, weathering steel is designed to stop the cycle after the first iteration of the rust layer formation. Another very common method for corrosion protection is galvanizing steel. This method employs a layer of zinc coating on the steel. Since zinc gives up its valence electrons more easily than steel, the zinc acts as a sacrificial coating to stop the steel from rusting. Over time, zinc galvanizing can wear and require recoating or other maintenance. Its lifetime depends on the thickness applied and the environment it's exposed to. If you like these steel and aluminum facts, let us know and we'd be happy to share more. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe.